Yeah, we're 10 days out from uh, first game of the year, and it's an exciting time for our program. We're in a stage of practice now where we're, we, I think we're prepared. If we had to play tomorrow, we could. So we're, we're at that final stage where we're trying to find the nine starters for opening day and, and avoid injury at the same time. And everything is looking really good. I mean, our team looks good. We've got depth at catcher. We've got depth on the mound or in the circle. We've got depth on the infield. We've got depth on the outfield. We've got veteran players. Uh, the competition in daily practice has been tremendous. Um, I think it's been going to show that it'll it'll turn out to be a huge advantage for our hitters to face the two All-American pitchers every day in their scrimmages and and the work that they're getting against them. So that's kind of where we're at. Where we're healthy for the most part. We've we've had a couple um, injuries where we're going to have some players out early, but you should get them back later in the season. And then we. You know our our starting lineups intact and and healthy and um, we're good to go. I think on in the circle and behind the plate we're healthy. So kind of an overview of our team. Um, we're we're winding down and ready to compete. Uh, practice has been going really well. Really good, really good. I, I actually got to spend quite a bit of time in the field. And uh, enjoyed my off season, and you know we got started back on practice January 6, and that kind of put a damper on the hunting season. But uh, I had a really enjoyable year as I adapt to Louisiana. I'm kind of learning my way around. I'm meeting the right people that uh, are finally remembered to call me and invite me. So it's good. From what you've seen so far in January, how do you think this team is going to handle? I guess chemistry-wise and leadership-wise, the high expectations on a day-to-day basis. You know, I'm I'm amazed by our chemistry right now. I think our chemistry, I feel like it's as good as I've ever had a ball club at this time of year, and that kind of surprises me because the competition is so intense and so um, severe and deep that I was expecting to have chemistry issues. I thought that would be our number one challenge, and as of today, that's not been any factor. They just they just seem to um, really feed and thrive off each other in practice and enjoy each other. They're a fun, loose team, which is always a good sign. And uh, we'll see. You know, when you put nine out there on opening day, that, that's when we'll know, two or three days after that, we'll know. But as of today, they're just amazing how they're gelling together and, uh, and how much they seem to enjoy being at the, at the ball field and around each other. Yeah, you know, I think every situation is different, but there's no doubt. I was thinking today as I walked by the baseball field, like I, there's got to be like moments when they're drifting and, and idle moments. And I think the key is they just have to stay focused on what they want and they have to block everything out while they're on the field and then deal with deal with what you have to deal with off the field. But I'm sure it's really challenging for that program right now. I, th- it, I think that the fact that we have a very veteran roster, an extremely talented roster, and a lot of depth, is, that part is very similar to the NPF. I mean, the NPF, you'll have 23 players on your roster, and they're, they're all Americans. They all are, you know. And, and so you have to figure out a way to make them all feel like they're important and, and, and make them important so you use their talent. And, and that, that similarity is there on this team. I've never had a team with, with the depth that we've got that – you know, deep in the roster and trying to figure out how to use everybody and give everybody that feeling of uh, importance to our ball club, which is important. So, yeah, I think that experience will come back to help in some ways. You know, it's irrelevant when the season starts. We got to go. We've got to get it done on the field, and 
And I think that deep down maybe you'll have some inner confidence when you've got Kleist and Camuso that's been there. You've got Hudek and Alderink that's been there. You know, Coach Rob's coached in the World Series. Coach Lacey's coached and played in the World Series, I believe. And so I'm sure in some ways that will help us and benefit us to have that experience in our dugout. But at the same time, we have to – you can't rely on that. we got to get out there and get it done with our bats and with our gloves and with our arms. And so it's, it's going to come down to us, you know, what we do with our talent on the field and, and getting it done on the field this year in 2020. I'm hoping it'll help a lot. That's the reason we scheduled it that way. I mean, I wish we could have got more games the last month of the season, but we can't. So the best we can do is really toughen up our preseason schedule. And this particular team with the talent we have and the goals that we have, it was a no, you know, no-brainer to just go out and try to add anybody that wanted to play or that could afford to, you know, that, that had room to put us on their schedule. And, and you know, even tougher, we're going on the road. So the biggest part I'm worried about that schedule is just the amount of travel. It's going to be really a strain on our student athletes physically. The weight room is going to get really disrupted. Their work, their weight room schedule, and so how we come out of that, and if we can avoid injuries right after that, uh, especially that 11 game, uh, the 11, 12 game road trip from February 15th to March 1st. If we can avoid injuries in that first two weeks of March while we get them back on our regular weight room schedule, that's the part that worries me the most. The other part is just all benefit, and there's no doubt the experience we get of going on the road and playing those really tough, you know, Power Five teams, it should come back to help us in the regional and super regional if we can, you know, take advantage of that. Don't ignore them. I mean, we just you got you, you know you, you know the athletes are going to enjoy, they're going to enjoy the polls, they're going to enjoy the, the talk. That's why we play the game. We talk about the game, enjoy the game. But the reality is, when you step on the field in practice or in a game, you have to block that out. It doesn't it doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't matter. It it can't be part of your daily focus. And just play the game as hard as you can. Practice the game as hard as you can when you're practicing. Um, and the, the respect that they get through the polls and stuff, that's great, but it, it doesn't help us win any game, so we just block it out. What's the next step in the evolution of your hitting? I mean, the last season you guys took a huge step forward, so what's the next step of that? Well, this, you know, we started in late November, but practice started in January for us two years ago. And, and going into season, we didn't really spend time on the mechanical side of the game or really even on the approach side as much as we do. Now, so I felt like last year was really year one for us. Um, and this is, to me, in my mind, it's year two. The kids understand the hitting routine now. I think our biggest focus this year is just to maintain. We really fell off the end of last year, and I, I, I'm not sure why that was. I want to think that uh, I believe a lot of it was probably just mental fatigue for the things that happened early in the season and the early season um, dynamics. And so I'm hoping that we can stay balanced. And, and I think part of that re the way we do that is just to don't overhype the first month, month and a half. And then I have to maintain my energy. My energy and my focus has to stay. It, it can't get late in the season. It has to stay really strong and, and focused. And I think I can do better at that this year now that I realize. I, as I look back on last year, I really got tired in April and May. And I think that that probably hurt my team a little bit when I lost my – my energy and my focus. So, um, you know, we're going to make some adjustments and, and hopefully we can just be steady is the main thing I want to see out of our team. I want to see us be consistent. And I do hope we'll have a little bit more power again this year. Uh, I, I was satisfied where we went last year as far as going up, um, but I want to go on up. I want to I want to see us get up our 70-plus 70, 70 home runs this year, if at all possible. Coach Clark, Tanner on board. Uh, how would that process go with you being able to bring on board? What have you seen so far with the work with you? It just gives us another another person that's been on the mound, that's been there and done that, been in the World Series, pitched against the highest levels, um, and, a, and a young voice um, to talk to our players. So from that perspective, it's really important to keep at least uh, you know one or two young student, recent student athletes on your coaching staff to kind of infuse that young 
communication, young blood into your lineup, young enthusiasm. And then it gives us a really good arm to, to face in BP. Uh, she's able to throw a really high level BP. Of, 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 she can throw batting practice with velocity. I think that's going to help us. And then just her enthusiasm and things that she says to the kids. She's a, she's a gym rat. So she infects her, she, her personality infects our ball club with energy and enthusiasm. And you can tell that by, by watching her and the kids when they communicate with her. Coach, you have two All American seniors. How are you going to go about developing your future pitching staff with such a hard schedule and still giving the innings to the two ladies on defense? Uh, we're all in on 2020. I'm going to worry about 2021 and 2021. And, and you know, our development is in the bullpen. And, and, and on the side, and you know, I've I've said since last fall that the the kids that aren't starting this year are the most important part of our bullpen for the future and for our program. So we're not going to forget about them. But we're going to we're going to work really hard to develop them. I've I've told Coach Roberts, you know, that it's not Clyston Summers the most important pitcher in our Ross in our bullpen. It's it's the kids that are going to be here the next three years, and uh, so. We're not going to forget about them, but this year is about this year. And I expect Kleist and Summer, if they stay healthy, I expect them to start most of our games. And, and I'm not going to worry about next year. I'm, we're all in on 2020 season. Ryan, that lineup, you, um, last year, you're basically riding one arm at the end of the year. What are, what are the major benefits of having two plus plus arms like that? Yeah, I need to correct Summer. She said she pitched 50 something games, she only pitched 50. She was in 50 games. Um, only 50. Um, so, yeah. You know, it's going to help us. It's, there's no doubt. I mean, we saw Summer top out last year against Baylor with 18 strikeout game. She was throwing 70, even clocked as high as 72 miles an hour in that game on a, you know, a good radar gun, an accurate radar gun. And then by the regional time, she was 65, 66. And, and understandably so, her arm got tired. And... I believe that with having two pitchers that we can take the load off each other, and not just physically but mentally, it's going to be a lot less load on either one of those two girls. And, and then the biggest thing, if we do get into a situation where we have somebody get sore or, or hurt or injured, we can really be careful um, with soreness. We can, we can stop with soreness before we know for sure if it's hurt or just sore. And so there's a lot of advantage to having two good arms to really – you know, depend on versus one. How do they uh, complement each other? You know what? They're 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 similar in a lot of ways. They both can go up and down. They both have got a good change up. Um, but I think, you know, the reality is, um, their their best pitch is different. Summer's got a tremendous rise ball. Uh, her rise ball is really really good, and it sets up a very effective drop ball. Kleist has got an extremely good drop ball, and it sets up an effective rise ball. And then they both got change up, but Kleist change up's just off the charts. It's really good. So they got different go-to pitches, and they, we can make them pitch different. We can, we can focus and, and make them look dissimilar, even though they're basically similar. And velocity-wise, they're going to be pretty similar. There's not – Summer doesn't throw hard in the preseason. She hasn't the last two years, and then she turns into a superwoman whenever the first game starts. And I expect her to do that again this year. I expect her velocity will jump way up. It has every year. She's just a great competitor. And and I think that's a dissimilarity where Summer, you know, she's kind of a just – she just kind of goes through the routine and practice. She doesn't really put a lot of emphasis on practice. She's a great, great competitor. And what I've noticed about Megan Kleist is she's a great preparation person. Like she really prepares well. So it's good. I think that this similarity has been good in our bullpen for our young pitchers to watch and observe. And so there, there's several things that are similar and things that are dissimilar, but they're both immensely talented pitchers. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. I mean, when the person beside of you is working really hard, you have no choice but to work harder. And so Megan's been good for us. And uh, in that same regard, you know, Hudek did that with us last year. She's works really hard. Camuso has been extremely hard worker in the fall and, and infected our dugout with enthusiasm and more of a Pete Rose type attitude in practice. After you get through the non-conference portion of the schedule, what's the challenge of obviously focusing on the President Sun Belt Conference twice? Because obviously the competition isn't what it was in the non-conference, but also um, having a postseason mindset at the same time. 
Yeah, what we'll do, we'll reevaluate when we get through that preseason and we get into our conference, we'll evaluate how our players did against those top programs and top teams and against top 20 competition. And then we'll make any adjustments. And we say, okay, ooh, you know, this player just can't, doesn't seem to be able to hit that level. We may make a, a, a lineup change based on that. Um, if we go through that and we feel satisfied with all of our position players, we're, we're definitely going to want to rest Rawls as much as we can that last 30 games a year, try to keep our legs fresh behind a plate. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how we come out of it. Do we come out of it with three losses where we think we might can host a regional? We've got to play a really hard – we'll just have to go to for a win every day. If we come out of that with eight or ten losses, where we realize we're not going to host a super regional, but we're in pretty good shape for a regional – then you know that we might affect us in a different way if we come out of it and realize we're not going to host either one, regional or super regional. Now we really start just being sure we're healthy for the postseason run. So we'll let the season play out and dictate how we handle our roster and our lineup and the substitutions. But without the one thing I know, regardless of any scenario, we want to keep our two pitchers healthy and we're going to want to rest Rawls behind the plate as much as we can this year. Yeah, I think it'll be fifty-fifty. I think we'll we'll start summer game one out of respect for what she's done for our program the last two years. Clyde still go, go game two, and they'll alternate. The only variation from that I would expect uh, in a regular season would be one if we're playing a two or three game series where they've saw one pitcher in, in the early tournaments. I probably wouldn't start the same pitcher two days in a row against the same team. We'd probably flip the order. And then the other would be injury soreness. If we, if you see one, either one of those girls start three, four games in a row, then there's probably a, a soreness or an injury that we're trying to take care of. Because otherwise, we're just pretty well going to go 50-50 right down through the season. Coach, you're going for like 20 minutes, and you haven't even mentioned the Sun Belt returning player of the year. What do you, what do you see? What can Alyssa do to up her game? You know, she's a great player, just a great athlete. She had class today, or she'd been here. Um, you know, she's a tremendous, tremendous shortstop, and obviously she's a great hitter. She's bad 400. But what I want to see her do is have more doubles and home runs this year. I want to see her be consistent in her approach at the plate. I want to see her with two out, focus less on being a contact hitter with two out and a punch. She turns into a punch and Judy hitter. I tell her when she gets two strikes, and I want to see her give up a few more strikeouts. She she rarely rarely strikes out. I'd like to see her sacrifice a few more strikeouts to to have the doubles and and home runs even with two strikes in her on her. But she's just a great player and a great leader. And with her and Alderink out there, it gives us a middle infielder a middle infield combination that we've not had ever since I've been here. It's really good. Uh, Carrie Boswell and Bailey Curry. Both those two kids have just really, really improved leaps and bounds, I feel like, in based on what I'm seeing in practice. And I, w I don't know which is the most improved, but they are both dramatically improved, and they're both going to have a big impact on our lineup, I believe. What position, not necessarily the most worried about, but what position is there the most competition at, the most unsure, maybe even the starting uh, the best competition is at third base and first base with uh, uh, um, Melissa Mayu and uh, Brittany Holland at third base. They're just neck and neck right now. And then at first base, Carrie Boswell, Courtney Grimion, Bailey Curry, and then we could put Taylor Roman there possibly. So that's a really – and those kids need to be in our lineup as much as we can. We're going to have to figure out how to get more than one of them in our lineup. But they're really battling it out at first base right now. Coach, talking about Brittany Holland, uh, I know she's been injured the last couple of years. How has she looked kind of returning from those injuries? You know, she's really made in strides in the last 30 days. Since we started practicing January 6th, from, from November till January 6th was a huge improvement. And then about January 20th, just like last year, her bat started firing and she's really hitting the ball well. And she's really putting uh, – she's kind of – you know, that wasn't, I wasn't expecting that competition on January 6th at third base. I thought Mayu had pretty well locked that position up in the fall. But Holland just played her way into competition there, and, and, and it gives us some really good depth. Um, so she's running better. She moves better. 
you know, things like sliding, you still cringe a little bit when she slides, and I think she probably has a little uh, emotional um, anxiety going on when she has to make certain movements after all she's been through, because that's, that's tough, come back from two straight ACLs. So I have nothing but admiration for her, and she is just a great team player. Like, she's a, she's a, she belongs in the dugout, in the locker room. She's, she's a ball player. Could you alternate there for a while? Could. Yeah, it's, that, to, that could happen. You know, we'll see. We got three or four more scrimmages. You know, if one of them gets hot in these last three scrimmages, they're probably going to get the nod there. And if they get hot when the games start, they may stay there. But if they struggle, they'll definitely be all, we'll definitely alternate there. Losing Keely Milligan, has that forced you to change your offensive game plan at all losing those early bases? No, we won't run. Yeah, that changed our, that did change the dynamics of this ball club. The stolen base last year was a big focus. You know, I, I told Keeley when she came here, we'd try to break that record. Um, and this year, I'll be really be conservative on the bases as compared to last year because I have so much confidence in our hitters this year, and I want to avoid injuries. You know, there was times we're running with a six nothing lead. I think this year, when once we get a six nothing, seven nothing lead, um, you know, we get in those type games, I'll probably just calm down a little bit just to avoid it, taking chances on injuries. For local fans here, just in the region, how exciting is having the LSU series be played two years in one year? It's, 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 it's going to be huge. Uh, we play here on Saturday and there on Sunday. I think that those two games will be huge, huge in attendance. I think they're going to be huge for um, softball, for fast pitch softball in this area. I think, it, uh, I think the young kids that play ball, I just think it'll be a great atmosphere at both ballparks, and I think it'll be really good for, for softball in general.